Come. Ah, come in, my dear fellow. Thank you. This is a most unfortunate affair, Prime Minister. What the devil do you... I only just had word myself. The intelligence cannot possibly have reached you. On the contrary, Prime Minister. Ample intelligence reached me the moment I opened the door to this room. It is perfectly obvious that you've been in recent consultation with at least two senior officers from Scotland Yard. The Home Secretary has also been here within the last ten minutes. The matter concerns an issue of national security with ramifications for the Ministry of War and the Admiralty. I shall not insult your intelligence by explaining these elementary deductions. Thank you. Now... The question as to who is responsible for this embarrassment has been resolved, but I perceive that there are certain complications. Oh, I do wish you wouldn't do this. You have ordered Scotland Yard to investigate. You will give them two days before you request my assistance, but you think it unlikely that they will make any progress. You have called me here this morning to ask if I should be able to persuade my brother to look into the matter. I shall. The Bruce Partington Plans by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle Dramatised for radio by Bert Cools with Clive Medicine as Sherlock Holmes and Michael Williams as Dr John Watson and featuring John Hartley as Mycroft Holmes and Stephen Thorne as Inspector Lestrade. The Bruce Partington Plans Your letter received. Am interested. Require more details of goods. Piero. Oh, for pity's sake, Holmes. Uh, for pity's sake. Anagram. I, I for sake, I for sake. Style. Oh, style, little P. <laughs> Did you know that Roland de Lassus composed over 1,200 works for the human voice? No, I can't say that I did. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Then he went mad. Shared rooms with someone, did he? <sighs> Anything in the paper? Uh, there's another revolution in Central America. Possible war in Africa. Imminent chains of government. Yeah, nothing interesting then. Holmes. Holmes, sooner or later the fog will lift. Life will get back to normal. Till then, why don't you try some of that patient Tibetan endurance you used to be so fond of? Oh, Watson. Watson. <laughs> Look out of this window. Why, for heaven's sake? <sighs> you can't see to the other side of the street. Haven't been able to since Monday. Yes, exactly. The thief or the murderer could roam London as the tiger roams the jungle, unseen until he pounces and then fading away into the cloud bank as if it never existed. <laughs> Your paper should be groaning under the weight of a thousand tales of villainy. But what's actually happened? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> the London criminals are dull fellow. There have been numerous petty thefts. Oh, petty thefts. <laughs> yeah, this great and sombre stage is set for something more worthy than that. <clears throat> Attend to your work, boy. Yes, Mr. Johnson. Which sheet do you have there? Sheet five. Armaments and control systems. Do you know every drawing in this office by heart, Mr. Johnson? Don't be impertinent. Hmm. Yes. Well, I suppose that's satisfactory. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. The assistant chief constructor will be here in 
32 minutes. The copies will be ready. As ordered, I trust. Exactly as ordered. Different components on different sheets to go to different workshops. So nobody knows what it is they're making bits of. How dare you adopt that tone? You are dealing with state secrets, Mr. Cadogan West. State secrets of great value. Can they remember the fact? Goods acceptable, state terms, Piero. Hmm, do you know, I believe it's getting worse. Who was it? Special messenger. Telegram. Hmm. Something interesting. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Holmes? Well, well. Whatever next. Whatever next, Watson. I'm going shortly, Johnson. Yes, Sir James. Working dinner with Admiral Sinclair. Damn nuisance. Do you have plans for the evening? No, Sir James. Just a quiet night at home. Mm -hmm. What about you, younger Duggan West? Going to the theatre, Sir James, with my young lady. Ah. We're getting married in the new year. Oh, splendid. In fact, sir, I've been hoping for a chance to talk to you about that. Mr. Duggan West, the Chief does not want to hear about your financial difficulties. I believe I'm still capable of deciding such matters for myself, Mr. Johnson. I need no assistance from my senior clerk. Of course not, Sir James. So, money troubles, lad? Well, a bit more is always useful, sir. Mm. If you can't afford a wife, then don't burden yourself with one. Marriage is an expensive institution. Don't get too accustomed to evenings out at the theatre or anywhere else. No, Mr. Johnson. Stop depressing the man, Johnson. Not everyone regards a wife as a millstone. Sir James. Apply yourself to your work, West. That's the way to get on. I'm sure that you don't want to be a drawing clerk all your life. Oh, no, sir. Good. But as to money, I can't help you. I don't control the purse strings any more than you do, I'm afraid. Believe me, I wish I did. Well, good night. Your response awaited. State terms. Piero. Hmm. What does it say? <laughs> Brother Mycroft's coming round. Hmm. Why shouldn't he? It's like meeting a tram car coming down a country lane. <laughs> Mycroft has his rails and he runs on them. His lodgings in Pall Mall, the Diogenes Club, Whitehall. That's his cycle. He's been here before. That business with the Greek interpreter. Once, and only once. Yes, what upheaval can possibly have derailed him? Doesn't he explain? Yes, he yeah. I must see you over Cadogan West. Coming at once. Cadogan West? Yeah, I've heard that name somewhere. Hmm? It means nothing to me. Cadogan West. Uh, ah, I've got it. Hmm? It's in one of these papers. <clears throat> ah, I knew it. Cadogan West was the young man who was found dead on the underground on Tuesday morning. Cab? Cab? He can't hear you. Cab? Oh, it's useless, this damn fog. Arthur! Sorry, but it is. <coughs> come on. It's not that far to walk. We might see another cab. I doubt it. Now come on or we'll miss the start. Are you going to be this masterful after we're married? Of course. Splendid. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to hear you laugh again. What do you mean? You know very well what I mean. I wish you'd tell me what it is that's been bothering you. Let me help. You can't, Violet. It's something I have to work out for myself. Is it to do with work? I don't want to talk about it. Is it about us? Me? In a way. If it affects me, don't I have a right to know? It's work, too. I don't understand. Tell me, Arthur. Please. Must know your terms. Abandon doubts. Delay dangerous to us both. Piero. Yeah, it seems to be a featureless sort of case. Mm. Apparently he was killed when he fell out of a train. Uh, no robbery, no reason to suspect violence. Uh, there must be more to it, much more. A death that affects Mycroft is no ordinary death. Indeed? Oh, yes. <laughs> Brother Mycroft coming here. 
A planet might as well leave its orbit. <laughs> uh, by the way, mm -hmm. do you know what Mycroft is? You told me that he had some small office under the British government. Uh, so I didn't know you quite so well in those days. Under the British government, occasionally he is the British government. My dear Holmes. <laughs> I thought that might surprise you. Mm, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yes, Mycroft's position is unique. He's the central clearinghouse of Westminster. I don't understand. Well, he has the tidiest and most orderly brain of any man living, with the greatest capacity for storing facts. Mm. The conclusions of every department are passed to him. Mycroft focuses them all and says how each would affect the other. His word decides national policy. Good Lord, I'd no idea. Aha! Jupiter descends. Oh, yes. Holmes, why isn't he famous? Celebrated? Because he chooses not to be. He draws £450 a year, remains a subordinate and has no ambitions of any kind, and yet he's the most indispensable man in the country. I'm sure you don't want to be a drawing clerk all your life. How dare he humiliate me like that? I'm sure he didn't mean it personally, Sidney. Oh, don't be ridiculous, woman. How else could he possibly have meant it? Don't you think you're being just a little oversensitive? Oversensitive? Told off like a child in front of my junior clerk? My junior clerk? I have responsibilities. I'm in a position of command. How can I exert my authority if the chief persists in undermining me at every turn? Well, why don't you say something? Oh, how can I? The man hates me as it is. If I file an official complaint against him, oh, what's the matter with that damn child? She's sick. I had to get the doctor back again. Oh, more expense. Good God in heaven. Angela. Shut up. Just shut up and listen to yourself. Begrudging your own daughter medicine. What sort of a man are you? Your response to hand, terms agreed to. Advise of your plans. Piero. Won't you come in, Mr. Holmes? Thank you, Doctor. You know Lestrade, of course. Uh, oh, good morning, Inspector. Doctor, Mr. Holmes. Lestrade? What brings you this here? This is a most annoying business, good Sherlock. Good morning, Mycroft. In the present status I am, it's most awkward that I should be away from the office. But this is a real crisis. I've never seen the Prime Minister so upset. And the Admiralty's buzzing like an overturned beehive. We've seen the report in the paper. Fortunately, Doctor, the full details haven't got out as yet. They must not get out. I hope you've prepared to allow them some rain, at least, or your visit's going to prove singularly unproductive. Really, Sherlock. Inspector? Hmm. Arthur Cadogan West was the junior clerk in the technical drawing office at the Woolwich Arsenal. Ten years in the service and done good work by all accounts. Hot-headed and impetuous, but also straight-dealing and honest. His body was found at six o'clock last Tuesday morning on the tracks just outside Old Gate Station. The head was crushed. And? This wretched youth had the plans of the Bruce Partington submarine in his pocket. Well, surely you've heard of it. I thought everybody had heard of it. Well, there is a name. It's been the most closely guarded of all government secrets. And yet everybody has heard of it. Don't be facetious, Sherlock. Everybody has heard the name. The technical details are protected as securely as the crown jewels. Only one set of the plans exists. They were kept in an elaborate safe in a confidential office in Woolwich. With burglar-proof windows and doors. Despite which... What's so special about this particular submarine? Well, apparently, Doctor, it's years ahead of anything the other powers have got. Well, I've been told that much, if nothing else. That is all you need to know. You may take it from me that naval warfare becomes impossible within the radius of a Bruce Partington's operation. Oh, oh, fascinating. Oh. I don't understand why you're here. Now, you said that this uh, Cadogan West had the plans in his pocket. So they've been recovered. Well, surely you don't need my advice on how to improve your security. The three most essential sheets were missing. Ah, that does put things into a different light. 